Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing a guide for Andrin, because Andrin is the speediest of boys. Andrin is so fast, you don't deserve to be in the same pool as he does. Yep, if you know that movie quote, good on you. It's a great movie. I'll try to link it if I can, if it's free on YouTube still. But uh, yeah, the this will be an Andrin tank guide, but really it's a guide for him as a support and as a pseudo healer as well, because all three of those roles, you're basically playing the exact same deck because the goal and the fame and the reason you play Andrin is that he is super duper fast and he always goes first. And I don't mean fast as in his talent here because this doesn't do anything. The What I'm talking about fast is his base speed here, 22. You only need like 23 to beat the squirrel and then like 25 to beat the rabbit, Monty. Uh, those are like the only things that can outspeed you. The first Hydra head will always beat you, but you can beat the second one with Andrin. And uh, yeah. Andrin will basically always go first. Part of that is his starting equipment does say plus one speed on it, but uh, all versions of it have that speed. So you can, with perks and his starting card, guarantee that he starts at base 22 speed and you'll try to just increase that a little more so that he is always going first every combat unless say you're doing upwind or some crap like that. So Andrin is going fast, blazing speeds, and he wears a great hat and all around Andrin is fantastic. Like I said, this will be the same video for all three guides. I'll probably post this as Tank Andrin, but you really only need to change one card and it'll be obvious which one, and I'll talk about it uh, if you're playing him in any other role because you are playing his deck all the way through every turn and uh, he's very consistent in what he does. So let's go through the talents. Like I said, Trailblazer here. Um, honestly, this does nothing for us because the problem with this one, it says... At the start of your turn, gain fast. It does say start, and it does say fast, but it doesn't happen at the start of combat, so if you're slower than your enemies, then this happens too late, and if you're faster than your enemies, then you don't need it anymore, so it doesn't do us any good. It's as if he doesn't have it, sure, sometimes it clears us slow every once in a while, but for the most part, this will have no effect on us. And that's going to be the case with most of the talents I talk about here, unfortunately. Level 2, you do have two options here that are viable, Maneuver and Wild Hunt. I highly suggest Wild Hunt over Maneuver for a couple reasons. One, yes, Maneuver can technically replace itself, but it can replace itself. It doesn't always replace itself. And most of the time, you're only going to use one energy behind it. So it's basically just a deflect, gives you two evasion, which we have other ways of getting evasion if we need it. And you don't always need evasion. And it's just kind of cluttering up our deck and making some weird play patterns. It's hard to play around sometimes and it doesn't really do anything for us that we can't already do. So it's just kind of in the way. And then it's competing with Wild Hunt, which although most fights I don't need or use Wild Hunt, the fights I use it is fantastic. Like this one, I honestly just keep Wild Hunt till Archon. <laughs> like it just makes single target bosses a lot easier. And especially for Archon, by the time you get there, this one card by itself will give you 50 mark on the boss. So you don't need any other synergies other than just basic Andrin talents here of Wild Hunt and down here at level five Mark for Death. And that's that's the only Mark you ever have to do on Andrin and he will still get max Mark on a target. So that's why I say pick up Wild Hunt. Most of the time you'll see me, you'll see me discarding it or skipping it in a fight because most of the fights you see are not the boss fights. On the boss fights, I try my best to try to get as much value out of this as possible. But uh, honestly, I could see you just cutting it and going without because you don't need a single talent from Andrin. You don't even need this Wild Hunt. It's just a fun little flavor to play with. I sometimes play without it. So uh, either level two is fine. Uh, I prefer Wild Hunt. You can go fine with either and you can definitely cut either one. Not a problem. Do as you see fit there. Level three, neither of these are useful to us. We do not play ranged attacks and momentum. We will try by level three to have cut all my attacks in general. So neither of these level threes help me pick up momentum just in case you get some use out of it. Level four, both of these do not help us at all. Serrated weapons is for attacking and sharp. We don't do either. And repost. Yes, it says block charges. Yes, it says mark, but it costs us card. It costs us an energy. It only gives block charges for us because none of our block cards affect the team. And we don't need block because we either already have enough or we're using evasion. And that just doesn't justify the cost. And this just gets in the way of our play pattern. So I actually recommend for level four, don't pick a card up when you level up. Only pick the card up after you defeat the boss for the zone. So you go to the, the boss, you'll kill the boss. Then after the boss and you loot the boss, you will pick up your level card talent. You'll go through the portal, you go to act four, and then you will immediately cut this card. 
And then level five, we level five, we still aren't playing ranged attacks, so mark for death is the way to go. And if you are running wild hunt, then this just makes it uber uber nice. And remember, wild hunt it says plus charges, and then every energy do this stuff, so it helps itself. So even the base version says for every energy two mark, and the the best version says four mark for every energy. Give or take some cases on if you're spending too much energy at once, but for the most part, you'll only be casting one cost spells when you do this. So that'll be the most efficient use out of it. Yep. Let's get talking to his perks and then his starting deck. So with reminder on these videos, I, I play on Madness 16, but I record these videos on Madness 14 just for more consistency for all viewers and players. So I'm playing uh, this video is on six plus eight. I play on eight plus eight and uh, dang bug the uh, that kind of applies to these first four columns here as well. Uh, of usefulness for survival, resistance is best, then health. And then for deck consistency, crystals are better than gold in my opinion. But honestly, all four of these columns don't really matter. This is just where I'm putting all my extra points. Play with those as you see fit. Yep. So the perks that do matter. Uh, we will be applying fast to the whole team and ourselves, and looking for items that have fast. So this is a must have. We're also trying to outspeed all the enemies. So we want all the speed perks. The slow one, this one is hit or miss on whether or not you need it. Uh, when in doubt, it's better to have it and not need it than the other way around. But I do recommend getting the Wolfie pet, which requires you to have Yager on your team. And then you'll always be using the slow perk to great effect. Uh, without Wolfie, it's hit or miss on whether you will have a card in your deck that has slow. But like I said, better to have and not need than the other way around. Everyone wants two starting energy. Yes, please. This site point is either here if you have the Oculi pet or just because of the fact that I have no other level one points that I want and I have to put a point somewhere. So sure, that could point could go into block if you wanted to. Uh, but I mean, plus one site is helps if you have the Oculi pet or if you're running Sylvie or if you're running Gustav. So it doesn't hurt to have this point and I have to spend it there anyway. Uh, I should actually have. So in the comment section here, the, the perks I posted will be different than what I have here because Andrew has a lot of points and perks that, depending on your team and how you're running him, you may or may not need. For general purposes, I say, hey, try to pick up buffer, try to pick up evasion, see if you need them, cut them if you don't. Uh, I don't need them, so I don't have them, but for general purposes, I have those elected instead of gold. Same thing with this mark talent here. So if you are on a slashing team, you definitely want the mark reduces slashing resistances. I am on a slashing team, but Yager is picking this up for me just so I can balance out and have more gold as a team. Uh, I do have this marked in the, the guide one and just make sure someone on the team has it. You absolutely want this plus one mark charges, though, if you are keeping that talent, that wild hunt that says, hey, I'm throwing mark everywhere because this will really help you cap that out. Yes. I right, And then physical here. Uh, we sometimes apply sharp. So yes, please. You can also pick up sharp perks for the team if needed. Vulnerable, there is a few edge cases where you will be getting plus one vulnerable charges, uh, but that's very rare in between because most of the time that you're applying vulnerable is if you have the Wolfie pet. And if you have the Wolfie pet upgraded, that means you have Yager on the team, which means Yager is most likely doing vulnerable for the team. So hit or miss on whether or not you need this left perk. Otherwise, just pick up one of the other ones for the team because you want most of the time when you have Andrin, you will be wanting this far right perk because you are likely running a physical team. And this is very great for the physical damage dealers. Uh, an elemental, we will be applying powerful sometimes. Uh, this tailored to your heart's to content. The second point is much less cost effective. Absolutely pick up this one one for one right here. This one is a little hit or miss on whether you need it. If you if you feel you're not applying as much powerful or you don't need Andrin to be the one doing the powerful, feel free to cut this one. Uh, for me, I find it much more reliable to just have Andrin do the powerful for the first couple of acts and then someone else will pick up the baton and uh, carry it for him. Everyone wants more cards. And then of course here in Mystical, I'm on a Yager team, so Vitality is good. Also, there's an edge case where sometimes you'll have Andrin apply Vitality Talk more about that later. Only costs one point. Hit or miss on whether you need it. Same thing with regen. There is a card you will play all the time that has regen on it, but regen is not very powerful to begin with, so it only costs one point. Hit or miss on whether you need it. Bless. You will be applying bless for me. I don't apply bless very often, but a lot of the times when I see an Andrew or play an Andrew in front line, 
one of his coolest cards, his payoff cards, does involve Bless. So it's a very low opportunity cost to pick this up for one point. So all three of these are hit or miss on whether you need them and or get any benefit out of them in a run, but they only cost one point, so go for it. And then if you're running Oculi as a pet instead of the, the uh, Wolfie, you'll want to pick up this insane perk to make sure that the insane charges from Oculi stick around between rounds and help it so that the dispel creatures that dispel dispel crappy buffs instead of good buffs. Uh, yep, that should cover it for Nandrin. His, like I said, is a little weird because in the comment section, I have posted a much different one than this. I have like eight points out of this gold distributed amongst all sorts of things that we talked about here. Um, but tailor it as you need to your run. I, and then let's go check out everyone else's perks and then go to Andrin's starting deck. So Reginald. Do, 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 do. And in this run, Reginald is running my Oculi. So that's why he had the sight charges and will also have the insane charges. Uh, da, 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 hypno squares there. Yager is also on my team. Yager here is applying vulnerable, picking up my team perk here, doing all of the Yager things. Recently had a Yager guide, which Yager is busted. It's true. And then last but not least, this is a Grookly team. So Grookly here is running all of the damage buttons because Yager, I mean, Grookly here would like to kill everything in sight. He is an angry redheaded dwarf. Pretty sure he's redheaded. Maybe the skin that I have on him right now doesn't, but hot tempered, right? I don't mean that in any way other than to say he's hot tempered. Um, where am I at? Decks. So Andrin starting deck. So with this, the goal of Andrin is to go first and play literally his entire deck on turn one. You, I will not necessarily play all of my cards, but I want to see all of my cards and decide which ones I need. The Depending on your team, you will have to speed up one or two characters. So you'll have one or two chance of initiative. Even if you're trying to speed up one character like I am here with Reginald, it's still good to pick up both these chance of initiative so that it's easier to hit it because of the cards we absolutely need um, for my Andrins, I, I need to speed up my team. So I need one chant of initiative and I need the Song of Celerity. And the Song of Celerity says, oh, by the way, this affects all heroes. And so if we're looking for this, we're just looking for fast and we're looking for a chant of initiative. Upgraded ones are fine. You'll probably want to go with the blue one. The orange one's cheaper, but it's harder to play around the speed manipulation of the team. Um, let's actually look at that right now. So with the way these fast spells work. So we're using both Song of Celerity, which is a base of one in all versions, one plus perks, and then chances of initiative, which are either base three or base two. So what usually happens here is your starting team, you need them to go either two or four slower than the rest of your team. So when I set up perks, I think Grookly here, let's see, Grookly here doesn't have his last speed, right? Because I want him to go the same speed as Yager and as fast as possible. So Yager and him are both at 17. Now Reginald, the fastest, fastest he can get is 13 because he is slow. Healers are just super duper slow. If I go to his perks, he has all three of his fast perks, <clears throat> but he's four behind my other two guys. So the way I can fix that is two more fast. And if we look back at my fast cards on Andrin, if I can get to the right screen here. So on these fast cards, Chant of Initiative is base three, and Song of Celerity is base two. So the difference is two, which means I can use both Song of Celerity to speed everyone else and still be able to play a Chant of Initiative on Reginald, and Reginald will now be tied with everyone else, and they will go in the order that I have them listed here. Reggie, Yager, Grookly. Which, by the way, if you're running Reggie or Maluka, have them go after Yager, not before. That's something I learned after this run. Um, if you have Nesglect, you want him before Yager. Anyway, so the, the turn order matters, and I'm trying to get everyone as fast as possible, but still in the order I want them. And you get into this problem that if I have, if I'm relying on this yellow chant of initiative, its difference is only one. So either like, yes, I could use just the yellow chant of initiative to speed up Reginald. But then if for some reason, Yager and Grookly are slower than one of the enemies, I can no longer use Song of Celerity because if I do that, they will now both go faster than Reginald and I can't speed up Reginald anymore 
because I've now flipped this yellow one that even no matter how many fast perks I have will always be only two speed quicker than the Song of Celerity. And I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to explain this in a, in a succinct way. And that's also why we can't use Song of Quickness because Song of Quickness has a base two and the fastest initiative goal three. So I could do a Song of Quickness and a Chant of Initiative if Reginald was too faster, but he's not. And usually what ends up happening is you have to pair a Celerity and one of the quicker Chants of Initiative, not the slower one, not the three fast with perks, but the four fast with perks. And so you'll see when I upgrade this Chant of Initiative, I'm always just going to go to blue so that I, I can maintain that plus two over the Song of Celerity because I don't always need to play the Song of Celerity, but I want that option to open for when I do. And another way this ties in is there's a lot of events in the game that if you select the option, like if you charge the tree, you charge Ignino, a lot of these ones that say rush in and attack them, it'll give your entire team plus two fast. And if you aren't set up with one of these stronger chance of initiative, that means Reginald will not be able to outspeed the Yager and the Grookly because I just don't have enough fast to give him. Like if I'm trying to rely on this one, even with perks, that's three, and he'll just be stuck going slower than the other two. So that's why I have two chance of initiative and the innate Song of Celerity. That way I only have to find one chant to succeed on my main goal for Andrin. And then after that, everything else is just gravy. I want things like Ode to War. Ode to War says, hey, I can do powerful. There's only one option that can target someone else. So that's the option I'm suggesting. It is very pricey. Andrin's starting deck here is the priciest of them all. So that's why I said the rest of this is gravy. The, the Ode to War is, is nice, but not guaranteed or not reliable on a Madness 16 run. You might have to div divination into it. But I use this to give Powerful to Grookly, and it's versatile enough that I can do Evasion to myself if I need it, or to anyone that's dying. It also gives a little bit of regen. Remember, I don't have the Evasion perk. You can't see it. I'm pointing at the screen here. I don't have the Evasion perk that changes this from 1 to 2, but this will be base 2 if you have the perk, which is very nice to keep someone alive. Uh, other things we're trying to do is maybe apply sharp. This is the one I actually add the least often to my deck because yes, it's nice to apply sharp, but most of the time the rest of my team can do it better, like either a Yager or a, um, a, a Gustav. They're applying sharp a lot more efficiently than me at one at a time. And I have very few card spaces because the goal of Andrew's deck is I want to play my entire deck. And that means I can only have like five or six cards that don't play themselves depending on uh, how how many corruptors I'm taking and or how many cards I had to do the, to draw. So in the starting town, I can only reliably have six cards that don't draw themselves. So I've got these vigilances. We'll talk about them a little more later. Those draw themselves. Celerity. So that's one. Setup adds a card. So that's minus one, but we're going to count as a zero. Oda War. That's our second one, two, three, four, five. Trace doesn't draw itself. Six. S this one does replace itself with a deflect. Seven, eight. So I actually have eight cards here that don't draw themselves which means I'm not guaranteed to find them all. But with Andrin's play pattern, I am guaranteed to find the ones I want, and I'll just discard the other ones or draw past the other ones. And that play pattern requires two, two things here. First off, you gotta search for Trace. Uh, if you're running low on shards, this just look at four will do you good. But uh, the safest one is the six self, and the most versatile one is any hero five. I go with the any hero five, but I mean, sometimes I, I just think to myself, why didn't I just go for the self six? Because I always play Trace on myself. Uh, yeah, this honestly, the only time you really need to switch this one is for like the Archon fight or um, if you're really struggling with fights and you're trying to re restart them a lot. This one has more options. So either option is fine. I normally go with the yellow one. But what happens is since Trace is innate, it starts in your hand, you're guaranteed to have it. And then combine that with these Vigilances, which we look for them by draw. These Vigilances are also innate and say spend an energy to draw a card. So yes, it sucks that they spend an energy, but we're guaranteed in our opening hand to have a Trace and two Vigilances, which means we can pick of our top seven cards, two of them to draw. We can look at at least five of them, but the other two, like we look at our five top five cards and if they have the things we want, we leave them and we cut everything else. And that, combined with how many deflects we start with and the setup, means that we will basically guarantee to see every card in our deck if we want to see it. And that requires some little 
uh, vigilance and not being too greedy on keeping cards. And we'll, we'll look at that in the play pattern here uh, when we do the first combat. But uh, yeah, the idea is I always want to find one chant of initiative. And then after that, I'm just looking for anything nice. Nice things being expert tracker. Expert tracker is the best trace in the game because this one, if I use it on myself, I lose a card until my next turn. But if I use it on the person behind me, I didn't lose a card. I just gave them my card. And then I also looked at their top seven and discarded any, which is one of the strongest trace effects in the game. I mean, this one only ever gets to six at yourself. This one says seven at anyone. Like, sure, the base ones aren't as good, but the best one is, <clears throat> is seven at anyone. And you can really fine tune what they draw. And you're also giving them an inspire. So this really sets someone else to have a great turn. But remember, this is not my main goal of Andrew. This is just a nice thing to have. And set up. You can always go for the zero cost that you it doesn't gain you any cards, but it helps filter your deck. The problem is, since Andrin starts with that adrenaline, uh, I actually highly recommend you really try this one cost version. I remember back in the day, I suggested the zero cost version a lot more, but I found that as long as you know how to work around it, this this one cost is, is definitely worth it. It's just sometimes you can't always play it because it costs an energy. Uh, we are struggling with the, the talking and the breathing. Give me a second to get some water. And where are we at here? So we have Adrenaline starts in the deck. Deflects, we're going to add another one. Uh, Expert Tracker, we're going to keep throughout the entire game. This is a fantastic card. Scavenge. So Scavenge, this is a wild card. This, this is a little on the expensive side to craft, so I don't expect all players to make it. But if you can, it is very versatile. And we want the one that doesn't lose us a card. You see, this one says, place it on top of your deck, place it on top of your deck. That basically says, hey, lose one card, which we don't want. This zero cost one right here that says, put it into your hand, basically becomes a deflect, if we have a deflect in the graveyard, or a expert tracker, if we have an expert tracker in the discard, because we, we want expert tracker, but it's not our guaranteed thing. So we'll dig past it, ditch it with our trace. And then if we find all the pieces we want, the scavenge can turn into anything we need. So if we have Scavenge in hand, we still haven't found our Chant of Initiative, then we can turn it into a Deflect, draw a little deeper. Or if we found everything, we can go back to our discard and find the things that we passed up earlier, and it turns into those. It makes for some really smoother play patterns. Uh, I would say I'd rather have a Scavenge than a Deflect, but I'm pretty sure it costs less than the Deflect. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Depending on how many shards you have is determines what you craft here, but... Scavenge is basically a wild card. It's a little harder to play around than some of the other cards in our deck, but I've I've never run into an instance where it caused me problems. Scavenge was always useful or better to have. If that makes any sense. Uh, we talk about traces, chant of accuracy. Like I said, this is the, the weakest of the ones that we have. Uh, another card I can see Andrin playing that I've played several times to pseudo good effect is this tune-up. Of the tune-ups, let's see. I always read these wrong. Not top of your deck, into your hand. This one right here. So the blue tune-up. I could easily see running this instead of the Chant of Accuracy to make our deck more consistent. Because like I said, we can only have so many cards in our deck that don't draw themselves if we want to see our whole deck. And tune-up does technically replace itself if used correctly. And the Chant of Accuracy does not. So it's, it's sixes on which one I would suggest to you. Uh, you can fumble the tune-up a lot, a lot more often though, so... That's why I don't have it in the starting list here. All right, done. Uh, yeah, that should cover everything. Chant of initiatives, guaranteed. So like I said, sometimes you're speeding up two people and you need to find both of them. Sometimes you just need to speed up one, and it's always nice to have an extra one just so you're more likely to find it. And uh, yeah, that's everything. Let's uh, let's maybe go talk about it. I got a new sticky note here. Let's see. Perks, team perks, starting deck, pets. Let's talk about pets. So for Andrin... I really highly recommend doing Wolfie. Uh, if you have access to Yager and Wolfie, and you have Yager on your team, Wolfie is fantastic on Andrin because you can guarantee corrupt him to the Astral Wolf that says, oh, by the way, every turn, apply slow, vulnerable, and shock. And it's the slow that is the most important to me. Because if Andrin's going first, and he guaranteed casts a slow card for free, like, this does not cost a card in my hand, for free, slow down everyone it just makes life so simple and so easy so i i highly recommend if you have Grookly on the team 
pick up Wolfie, you have to pick it up in the starting town if you want to corrupt it, because you have to go up to the Yager spot and pick up Wolfie a second time to corrupt him. And this is just end all be all the best reason to play Andrin these days. Yes. <clears throat> but if you're not running Wolfie, there are a couple other options. Uh, Asmodee is nice because he's a, a random hit on the slow. One in four chance you hit the person you want. And he also applies Mark and you have a lot of ways to increase Mark charges. So that's 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 fair. That's pretty good. It also removes three buffer, which is a big deal on a lot of fights, especially hex proofs or bosses. So buffer removal is, is nice. Asmodee is a very powerful card. Uh, and then Oculi is the other main one that I usually run on Andrin because if you're going first, Clairvoyance here will remove two buffer. Again, fantastic. You also have the Vigilances in your deck, which help remove buffer really fast. So you can clear out a lot of buffer with Andrin going first and do a hexproof fight with Oculi on your team or uh, as your pet. And then remember, the upgraded Wolfie removes three buffer. So, <laughs> man. Oculi is is fantastic pet, and this also allows if Andron's going first, and he has Oculi, this will mean that the first two debuffs on a monster are going to be Sight and Madness, which really help on fights like Yilmer, or you know the tree that dispel themselves because then they're going to dispel to weaker buffs instead of like your slow, your vulnerable, or your burn, the very powerful buffs that you can put on later. So having your fastest character have Oculi has great benefit. But like I said, Wolfie's just that much better. So I would say priority is Wolfie, then Oculi, then Asmodee, and then I notice I'm, I'm missing some very expensive pets, and then Sharpie. The, the problem with Sharpie, though, is Sharpie is just a redundancy of your passive. And I already said your passive isn't that good. On your turn, gain fast. So the reason I'd suggest Sharpie for Andron, though, is the Dispel, and then the option, if you are... If you do pick up Sharpie before you unlock her naturally through the run, you can corrupt Sharpie and then you get access to one of the strongest things you can do as Andrin, which is give speed to your entire team. We already have a card in our hand that does this, but being able to do that for free without a card slot and without paying energy is fantastic. So I would say Sharpie is fourth on my list unless you can guarantee corrupt her and then she's like second on my list because the only thing that beats, you know, AoE fast to the team is AoE slow because we can already do AoE fast, right? So Wolfie fantastic. Then a Corrupted Sharpie, an Oculi, and an Asmodee. Yep, those are the pets. And to make sure when you're leaving Act 1, you have to pick up Wolfie before you leave Act 1 if you want to corrupt it. All right, that was pets. And then we are at team decks. So this is the rest of the team. Remember, this is an Andron video, not a Reginald or Yager or Grookly video. Although these are going to be pretty close to what I normally recommend for them. All right, let's go to the combat. I feel like I have talked way, way more than usual by this point in the video. So whew. we might not finish these combats just because boy, boy. OK, so Andrin. Andrin is a great character for efficiency. Um, multiplayer, though, he can cause some problems because you'll see there are going to be a lot of decision points. He's going to take a long time and he interacts with other players' turns. So if I'm in a multiplayer setting, we're all playing one character, and I start to trace your deck, which I'll do later, and then I have to say, hey, you have to give me some input for me to finish my turn, and it just slows down the process. Now, it is nice, though, in the fact that he is a complex frontliner or tank, so you do get to feel like you're accomplishing and doing a lot of stuff, but you're also spinning your wheels a lot, and you're taking, you're just taking a lot of the time from the rest of the group. So. Play with that as you will. It's it's a thing. All right, so first off, always trace yourself. Uh, before you trace yourself, it's nice to count how many card draws you have. I have one, two, three card draws. Remember, my goal is to speed up Reginald and the rest of the team. I have the whole team speed right here, so I'm just looking for that chant of initiative. So trace, here's my first chant of initiative. I say first because there are two of them. So what I can do here is I can actually just keep this scavenge and I will discard these two. Because yes, I want this Chant of Initiative, but remember this Scavenge can be either a Chant of Initiative or a Deflect. And yes, optimally, I can keep this Deflect here and it'll be blocked for the turn and it doesn't hurt me to keep it. But uh, remember, he takes long turns and if the Deflect is after the setup, it actually hurts you to be in your, your starting one. So I just default to just discard Deflects. If you need the block, go for it, keep it, but never keep a deflect that's after a setup in this preview. 
and deflex just take extra time. So I'm going to keep all this, discard these other two, and I'm going to draw to my, my setup. Now I have my setup, and I'm five cards away from the bottom of my deck. The bottom of my deck does have a chant of initiative and an expert tracker that I want, so I would like to dig deeper, but then I'm running into mana cost issues. So to cast the Song of Celerity and the Chant of Initiative for my graveyard, that's two, and I want to play the Soda War, that's three, I really only have one extra energy to spend unless I hit this Adrenaline. And I can't guarantee hit this Adrenaline, but I could risk it. And if I risk it, I'm losing out on this Ode to War. So honestly, for the safer play pattern, I'm just going to skip it because I don't need this Adrenaline, this Expert Tracker. So I'm just going to risk it by doing the setup. I'm not going to see the bottom of my deck. If I needed to, I could have played the Vigilance and then the setup. And here's where this deflect after a setup sucks, because right here, sure, I have a card draw here, but this card draw just gets me exactly what I saw. So that so these deflects, if they're stuck behind a setup, that just turns the setup into draw two, not draw three, put one back, which is significantly worse, by the way. All right, so now I have three energy left. I need to get my speed back and play my most important cards first. Speed him up, speed the team up. Give power to Grookly, and as you can see, I can't afford this Chant of Initiative, and I didn't draw the Adrenaline that would allow me to play it, but that's okay. I still did all my objectives, and then I can make Andron's turn just, I mean, Reginald's turn so much better. Hey, Reginald, I don't know. I think he has two Detoxes. I can get rid of that. I think that's right. That looks good. <laughs> and then I'll just breeze through these guys' turns to show that they're just that much better for having gone before the enemy, and, uh, if I can deny them a turn, I just win that much better. All right, so I need to get some smart. I want my Vigorous Fury to be a little stronger, so we'll do that, this. They're all dying. I win. Easy peasy. And it's just this concept of Andron will always play, and you want to, you rarely want to add a card to Andron's deck. Rarely, rarely will you add a reward from the run. Most of his deck stuff you want to do in town, because once I had one more card, I'm that much more likely to miss on the things I want to do. And I'd rather have played on that specific combat. I'd rather have done the Adrenaline and the Chant of Accuracy than a lot of the rewards I can get from combat rewards. If that, yeah, if that's clear. So here it is. That was that. That was the combat. And let's go to actual deck list. Remember, if you want to upgrade Wolfie, you have to go up here to the boss's back with Yager on the team. Act two. So on his new deck list here, we basically only added Ballad of Evasion. And let's talk about either Ballad and some of your other payoff cards. I did get rid of that Chant of Initiative because I really don't have much space to add anything. And it looks like I got rid of that Chant of Accuracy. What did I add for that Chant of Accuracy? Oh, Wild Hunt. So I've added Wild Hunt instead of Chant of Accuracy. I'm more likely to play it because it's zero cost. And it's give me a similar effect of just increasing my damage. And then I've added this Ballad of Evasion instead of this other Chant of Accuracy. So it's a little riskier to get my turn one effect, but now I have a turn two effect that is very nice. And this is what Tank Andrin is all about, is Ballads of Evasion. So if I go Stanza, this is where a lot of the payoff cards for having Andrin are. You can go Ballad of Conquest or Ballad of Evasion. Both of these are fantastic. One's defensive, one's offensive. Um, the problem is they're both turn two. So usually what happens is I will efficiently play through my deck really well the first round. And uh, and then on round two, if we took any damage or we're in whatever, I'll use the ballot evasion to help the team recover. Everyone will have buffer and evasion. My healer and or my Yager will help heal the team back up. And then my DPS will finish off everyone else left. And the ballot evasion helps protect us from any extra hits or, or falling behind at all like that. Uh, it gives us a couple of rounds of recovery because everyone has, you know, two hits. And since they're going to maybe some of the monsters will be dead, those extra two or three. Remember, I don't have the perk here. Uh, evasion hits will will really protect our health from moving anymore. And one thing I was remiss to I didn't mention in the first act, one of the other cards we could be playing instead of the chant of accuracy is anything that has evasion, specifically this blur. So 
with this blur, I didn't actually have an example of the play pattern. You want the yellow one if you can afford it, because it has an X-ray evasion stack. But you don't want to end stealthed. So if you're if you're evasion taking up front and you play blur as your last card, then suddenly you're stealth and you're not helping anyone. So what you have to do to play blur is you have to play blur and then something else afterwards. So it's a little harder of a play pattern, but you can get some evasion on turn one very efficiently efficiently. And like I said, if your main objective is just the speed of the team, you have a couple extra energy and cards to play around for your other objectives. And that could be either adding evasion to yourself, adding a couple extra mark, um, adding a little bit of sharp, whatever your, your flavor is. And like I said, this is why he, it's the same deck for all three rolls because you're only changing one or two cards. So instead of this ballad of evasion, I would do a ballad of conquest if I'm DPSing. Um, and I also forgot in the starting town, this has, been, this has been a day, to mention that if you want to be healing at all from the beginning, you can be using Vitalizing Serenade because extra vitality means extra hit points means you technically heal people. And technically, I mean, it doesn't trigger on heal effects, but their hit points moved up. So the uh, you can start with this as your payoff card in Act 1. Again, this is something you're not going to play until turn two, but even turn two is effective as just a, hey, let me recover everyone's hit points. And since you're going before the rest of your team, the upgraded versions that have the regeneration on them mean they will get full value from the regen. This is basically a, uh, so with Decadence on, this is a heal 13. With Decadence off, this is a heal 23. <laughs> kind of a big deal. Wait, did I do the math right? 10, 13, yeah, 23. That's a lot. That's an awful lot. So, uh, <laughs> Andrew can heal, and then you're just going to use Serenade as your payoff there, or you'll use um, uh, Sweet Melodies, or where's the last one? Healing Serenade. So that would be your, your healer options. You can be a tank, in which case you're going to use the Ballad of Evasion and the Blurs, or you can be a support, in which case you'll just use the Ballad of Conquest and the Song of Quickness, the... Chant of, uh, Chant of Sharp. Yes, that one. I know the words. I don't know the words. It's getting late. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that covers everything for the Andron deck. Like I said, I didn't change much. I just added in the Wild Hunt and the Evasion. And these, honestly, these two pieces, this, the Wild Hunt, the Ode to War, and the Ballad of Evasion are the only flexible pieces. Everything else is basically set in stone. You don't need the Song of Celerity if you get good items and or pets. Uh, but everything else is required. You need the Vigilances, you need the setup, uh, you need the Chant of Initiative, or two Chants of Initiative, depending on how many people you're speeding up. You need the Trace to make sure everything's guaranteed on turn one. Scavenge is just another Deflect, you need all the Deflects. I guess Expert Tracker is the only other questionable one, but it's a really good one, so... Yes. Uh, you'll keep the Adrenaline just because you have the setup. So, like, there's very little flexibility, like, his... His deck is very flexible, but there's very few moving pieces to it, if that makes any sense. You're going to still be playing the same 13 cards. It's only the last two that really matter. Like, hey, do I want Wild Hunt? Do I want Ballad of Evasion? That sort of thing. And uh, just look for anything that says, if you just type in stanza, that'll be most of the payoff cards. Conquest, Evasion, Serenade. Eternal Lullaby is an option, but that's, that's super expensive. You can really only pull that off on Low Madness or if you have lots of energy uh, through items. It's really cool, though. It's a strong card. Um, but now that you have Wolfie, you don't need it anymore. Uh, and then last but not least was heal Vitalizing Serenade. That's a great heal card if you plan on being the healer in the group. All right, so that is it for Act 2 deck list. Where are we at? Team, team decks. No, items. Items. So let's look at Reginald's. I mean, not Reginald's. Andrin's items. I keep looking at Reginald and I click it as I'm in. So I've got the Corrupted Wolfie. I've got an item that says reduce the cost of a spell, and I've got some speed. And that's really the itemization I need on Andrin is speed. So if we go to items, I'm looking for anything that says fast at the start of combat. I want I want things that make me fast on turn one. And uh, flippers, fantastic. Cloak of speed, amazing. But the one you're honestly always trying to roll is this forest crown. It says it's guaranteed for the dryad, which it is. But Yilmer has a chance to drop it as well. So as you exit Act 1, you're hoping to have a Forest Crown. 
If you don't have a fourth crown, then you're looking to, to come back and pick up one of these two. Because remember, I want fast at combat start, not at turn start. And if I can't get that, then I'm just looking for anything that says speed. And I'm trying to get as much speed as possible. Boots of Swiftness are great. They go from two to three. Um, a lot of these armors are one to two, depending on what version they are. Your, your armor will only ever be one, so you're really only looking for something that goes to two or higher. Uh, steadfast boots are amazing because you can't be slowed, which means that if you do go to turn two, the only thing stopping you is shackle. Oh wait, corrupted steadfast boots say you can't be shackled? Oh yeah, fantastic. Because uh, you're just trying to get out first because if you go before the enemy, your deflects will actually save your life as opposed to going after them because you are not running reinforce. And uh, yeah, your armor slot and your ring slot are going to be where you get either your fast at combat start or your plus speed. And the more of it you can stack, the better. It doesn't hurt to have more speed. It only hurts to have not enough. You're never going to be punished for having too much speed as Andrew. Yes, 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 yes. And then your other two slots, your weapons and your accessory, you're really looking for things that either draw you more cards, which you can then convert to more plays, or get you more energy, which you can then convert to more card draws that give you more plays, right? So we're just trying to do that balance between cards we draw and um, um, and energy we spend. So like I said, there's some of these ones that say melee attack draw a card. So if I had a melee attack that already replaced itself, then having one of these weapons would be beneficial because I'd draw an extra card. But as it is, all they allow me to do is keep a slice in my deck that I can then rebate with momentum and then rebate with this to replace itself. But then it's just a waste of space and the payoff for it is not worth the item slot. I'd rather have this item slot to go to something like, hey, when I play a spell, draw a card because I'm playing lots of spells and like those, um, uh, like all these songs, these chants of initiatives, suddenly they, they start replacing themselves and I draw a lot more cards. So I want things to say on spell, draw a card or even this one, fountain pen. So the nice thing about Fountain Pen is since I'm going first as Andrin, there is one book you can play and it does replace itself and it is innate. So by replace itself, I mean the Fountain Pen replaces it, right? So when you play a book, draw a card. So there is an innate book. It costs like one energy. So yes, I'm paying one energy to do this. But since everyone's going slower than me, I suddenly gave th three Inspire out to my team and it's totally worth the one energy in my opinion. So... We want these things that say all heroes inspire or the things that say draw cards on stuff that we're already doing, not draw cards on stuff that we could add to the deck. Like all this stuff that says melee attack draw card, you can you can play with it, but it doesn't help you in any way. I just want these the books to say when I play a spell. Uh, accessories, there's a couple that say, hey, when you play skill draw card, that's great because deflex are both a defense and a skill. That also means that if your ring slot is giving you the the fast at the beginning of the turn or you have enough speed you can then pick up the the normal shield if it comes up this one remember your armor and ring are more important to have speed and make sure you're always going fast but if you have that guaranteed with like a forest crown then noble shield is a great pickup we also want anything that reduce on skills or i guess reduce because on skills or songs are the two things we play a lot of so not the ones that say every two turns but the ones that say every turn reduce a song because remember that uh that Song of Celerity is a innate card, so we'll always have a song in our opening hand, and we'll always have a skill in our opening hand with the Vigilances. So all of these work very well for that. Of course, everyone wants Destiny. You'll probably give that to someone that will better utilize it than you. And then I guess the last two things to mention are, I said all heroes. You are a great straw hat carrier because you go before everyone, and so they get all full benefits. You're a great fountain pen user because you go before everyone. And uh, yeah, golden laurel, same same idea. Just as long as I'm going before everyone, Hi even Hydra Egg, because that just adds up to like three or four healing just for free for the team every round. So not bad, not bad. And then last, of course, is anything that says energy or energize, because the more energy I have on turn one, the better my turn. But these are going to compete with my ring slot most of the time which might be one of my fast options. So you definitely want fast before you go for energy, but sometimes you can get away with just going for an energy rink. Yep, I feel like a babble about the items. Let's talk about the fountain pen spell. So in 
book. There's one card that is a book. It is an eight. It will replace itself because you can't put these ones to say on top of your deck because if it goes on top of your deck and then you draw a card and you suddenly lost a card by playing music sheet, it's only this yellow version and the yellow version is also the innate version. So if you're running fountain pen on Andrin, this is the only beneficial card to play with it and the only one that you will get any use out of the fountain pen really. So, and it does vanish, so you can't really play around that. Outside in Act 4, I'll show you a way to do that. And uh, yeah, that should be it for items. Uh, now we're on for the rest of the team's decks. So here's Act 2 for Reginald. Yager and Grookly. Pause as needed. And then let's talk about their items. By talking about their items, I mean just quickly show them. Just so you guys have an idea of what's going on with my team. If you're trying to follow along in any way, shape, or form. And let's see. I think we're ready for combat. So the only thing that's changed in Act 2, and we're going up here to this Goblin Chieftain, only thing that's really changed here is I now have that Ballad of Evasion, which is honestly kind of just in my way on turn one. Most of the time when I play, I do not have a turn two card. Uh, I plan on Andrin does all his cards on turn one and does nothing on turns two and three because he's just here to make my team fast. So you see, I did outspeed the squirrel. I was at, what, 23 starting? 24? What's my character sheet? Minus 4, 23? Yeah. So 23 was enough to go in front of the squirrel, and then the, the wolf pet here slowed him down. So I'll have the chance to speed up the rest of my team, and suddenly I will be rocking and rolling before them. So Wild Hunt, uh, the goal is to try to dig to it and play it as soon as possible because the cards you play after it is when you get an effect. If you end up playing Wild Hunt last, then it was worthless to even have. I'm looking for this Chant of Initiative and this Ode to War. Preferably this Expert Tracker too, because that'll help me with this hatch thing I got away on. And this fight here will be a good example of just adding a single card to my deck really slows down my consistency. Uh, so I will trace myself. I have two card draws. I have no items to draw cards. I have two card draws. Uh, sure, we'll just play the deflects out, but do not have any deflects behind a setup. It just makes your life worse. I do not have a scavenge, so I will keep this chant of initiative. Although technically I could probably ditch it. And then I draw to my setup. And here I'm hoping in the setup to three out of five chance to get this O tour and this expert tracker. Um, basically I could have one, two, three. I probably was guaranteed, oh, it's so close. The math is so close on if, if I had ditched this Chant of Initiative to the, the discard, I'm almost guaranteed to have picked up the Scavenge or ways to draw into it. There's the Scavenge. So what I can do here is I can actually deflect the Tracker and I have a 50-50 chance on when I Scavenge to get back the, uh, the, the, the setup to get the O to War. But I also have four energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scavenge back the setup. Another reason to play the yellow one. I have back the setup and now I can draw to this Ode to War and put Ballad Evasion back for turn two. And that's part of the, the nice thing about this this whole Andrin turn one stuff is I am drawing that Ballad Evasion next turn. And then I make everyone else's decks better. And I could deflect for more Wild Hunt triggers. I'm not going to just so I can leave the ev evasion on top because this is a noxious parasite hatch corruptor. So if I felt the need for more mark, I could have just played more energy and just you just you just spend cards just to trigger wild hunt, like even if they're not effective. I, I could scry myself or I could scry the Yager. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm talking about this like this is and this is no longer Andrew, so I don't really need to talk this one through. I just need to do. Follow along as you see fit. Sure. They all be dead. Compliments to Andrin for speeding us past a squirrel. Squirrel really makes a, for a bad day if you're not going faster than him. And honestly, you will you'll take a lot of damage. And then the rabbit is even worse. Everyone that's played against Monty with a super fast, uh, hyper efficient team knows that Monty is the bane of all turn one kills. Because if I kill them all, I don't take any damage. I take a little damage on Yager because he, he hurt himself, but whatever. It's enough there with Act 2. Let's go to Act 4. 
So you're going to notice that my deck will not change at all. Oh, I got one more scavenge, and I think I cut a deflect. I literally cut a deflect. So I, I've had this argument way too many times. A 16-card deck is not better than a 15-card deck, even if that 16th card is deflect. Because deflect gets in the way of things like trace and setup. So if you're like, man, I can't cut any cards from Andrin, the worst card is deflect, cut the deflect. You want to keep one or two for your scavenges, so there is a critical mass you have to have, because I want to be able to find and discard a deflect or find and play a deflect so that my scavenges work. But even on a tank Andrin that wants to build up lots of block, deflects will make your deck less efficient. If you're going to keep any card past 15, deflect is the only one I will not, like, begrudge you. But even then, the most optimal decks do not go to 16, even with deflects. Okay, I'm done. Rant over. Uh, I'm still picking up scavengers. Remember, they're a wild card, so they're basically, I can just make them a deflect or a chant of initiative or a setup, whatever they may be. Because remember, in that last fight, I think I used it as a setup, which was fantastic because I, I found my adrenaline and then I was able to spend more energy. And remember, whenever you look at his deck, basically count up all the energy of every card, except for like the ones that require turn two, and assume that you're going to try to play your entire deck. So if I start with three energy on Madness 16, plus two from perks, or no, plus two from perks is three, um, plus two from Adrenaline, that's what I meant, five. Then I have one, two, three, four, five. I still need to find one more efficiency in my equipment to be able to play all of my cards, or I'm going to have to skip out on something like setup. So with my items and with stuff like that, I'm gonna and my perks, I'm gonna try to balance so I can play every card and afford every card if I see all of them. The only card of note in Act 4 that you can't see here and you can't craft that I do think is worth looking at to pick up is... Last Ward is basically another version of Scavenge. The problem is you have to be very particular about what upgrade you're using on Last Ward because not all upgrades are equal you notice some of these ones two of them say discard pile two of them say vanish pile two of them cost two energy and two of them don't um they all say the card you you find will cost zero and vanish which is great um but depending on your use case is where you're doing it so uh the blue one is really nice to use as another version of scavenge except for it's a little upgraded in the fact that hey i can pull up a, a setup for my discard and suddenly cost zero because this costs zero to play and I bring back a setup, and suddenly I just played a zero cost version of setup that's gaining me a card, which is really great. So if I'm trying to make my turn one more efficient, the blue last reward is the best version. But if I'm trying to replay my chant of my ballad of evasion, which vanishes, then I need this yellow one, which basically is a second copy of my ballad of evasion that I can only play after I've played my ballad of evasion. It costs two energy, but that's still cheaper than the ballad. But the problem is it's a second copy of the ballad in my deck, so it's harder to dig past it and play past it. So it is a little harder to play, but I can then play my Ballad of Evasion twice. And then, of course, the purple one is just a better version of the yellow one because, hey, it costs zero. But remember, this only hits your Vanish pile, so you can only pull back things in your deck that vanish versus discard. So blue is the easiest one to play with. Yellow is great if you want to do a very specific thing, and purple is better than yellow but still can only do very specific things. I still wouldn't mind always picking up the purple one just because of the things that vanish, even on turn one, you can't stack wild hunts, but I could play expert tracker twice. And, or I could play an adrenaline twice if for some reason I need more energy. Or I could music sheet on turn two to trigger my fountain pen again. So I will always find a place for the corrupted one, but if it's not corrupted, then you gotta be very particular about when you pick up that that one because it's very expensive to upgrade you can only switch it at the very final um uh forge right on the final floor and it's going to be a dead card if you have the wrong one in your hand the unupgraded one is very hard to play with is only usable on lower difficulties or if you have lots of extra energy yes 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 i think that is all for andron's deck it is very clear cut on the cards that he should have you're not going to stray away from this very much this music sheet is only here because of fountain pen. I have to be very clear about this. Music sheet. Fountain pen. If I didn't have fountain pen, I would have just kept the deflect. This music sheet would literally just be a deflect because remember, I've cut a deflect from my deck already. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 
Apparently, I don't know if I'm not knowing if I'm in a good mood to be making these decks. Like, uh, whew, this Andrin is hard to talk about. So that's Act Four deck Archon. So for the Archon fight, Andrin's deck is mostly vanishing. Uh, you definitely want to upgrade to the Blue Chant of Initiative by now, so that it stays in your deck, so that you can speed manipulate on later turns. If you go to Act, you know, turns two through six on Archon, uh, the Deflex are they're not vanishing or going anywhere. The Trace, basically the only thing you'll be doing as an Andrin um, late turns is either your Ballad of Evasion or your Ballad of Conquest and Trace. And that's fine because Ballad of Conquest and Evasion cost three energy and you get three energy a turn. And if that's the only thing you do every turn, that's a great turn. Like these Ballads, Ballads are fantastic. If all you did was play a Ballad of Conquest every turn, that'd be great. But there is this really cool play pattern with Andrin where you can play Ballad of Conquest multiple times a turn because if you get one of these items that say, let's see, let's go back to items. Spell reduce. So if you get the harp, these are permanent reductions or the, the corrupted flute. Reduce the cost of the high cost song spell in your hand by one. Forever. By two. Forever. Not, not until discarded. Not this jingle bell stuff or this wardrobe stuff. The golden harp or the flute allow you to permanently reduce the cost or like a destiny, like... Uh, an Emerald Staff or a Destiny. These ones are great ones too. Emerald Staff will, will bring it down to zero. And then Destiny will bring it down to zero. And if you have a zero cost Ballad of Conquest. And you only have in your deck. Because after turn one you're down to like three cards left. Right? Deflex. Trace and Setup. Oh you might have Chant of Initiative. And Setups. Like the only cards you have left. Are Conquest. Trace. And things that draw you cards. Which means... You can play Ballad of Conquest three times because you'll play it for zero cost. You'll re redraw it, fatigue it to one. You'll play it again. You'll redraw it, fatigue it to two, and play it again. All that for the low cost of three energy. Like, oof, very fun. But that is very item specific and only works for Conquest, not for Evasion, because this one vanishes. So it's a cool play pattern. It's one of the very few things that you can do for Archon. Otherwise, for Archon, all you're doing is just deflect spamming and tracing because... You're just like, hey, I want you to have a good turn because we have few cards or we have injuries or some such like that. All right, that is it for Archon. Team decks. Let's look at everyone's team decks. Remember, this is not a Reginald guide. This is not a Yager guide or a Grookly guide. <clears throat> but those are my team as of right now. Uh, I think I'm supposed to look at team items as well. I don't have that written down on my sticky note because I buggered that. Do, 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 do. And combat. So, uh, sparks or vulnerable. This is immune to vulnerable. One of the very few downsides of Wolfie is I go super fast and Wolfie doesn't attack as part of its thing. So, unfortunately, Wolfie says deal for lightning damage, which means you will trigger thorns and sometimes hurt yourself. It's very rare, it's not a big deal, but it is technically a downside. And if you're doing a Thorns proliferation, you could possibly kill yourself on a turn two or turn three because of how many Thorns they have. All right, so counting my draws, I've got one, two, three, four, four, is that right? Four draws. So that means I can be fairly greedy here. One, two, three, four. Yep, that looks great. So I would do all my zero cost stuff first until I find the wild hunt, play the wild hunt, and now I can start doing my energy stuff. I'm still going to go with the zero cost stuff first because I can. I'm going to be speeding up the team for sure. Nope, I don't need to speed up the team because if I look up top here, Grookly does not need to go faster than anyone. I've already slowed them down. I just need Reginald to go faster. So let's go finding stuff. Lamb. Uh, I can still draw more. I want to get this to three before I do my setup. So I will now scavenge for a deflect. I go one more. Now I have three cards left and I will set up. And I pick and choose what I want. I can't play the Ballad of Evasion. That goes away. And blam, I have all my pretty toys. It is better to be over-efficient than under-efficient. I'd rather draw too many of my useful stuff than not enough of my useful stuff. Uh, I still have Wild Hunt going. I've got one extra energy. I should trigger it with something. How about I trigger it with a, another Captivating Voice? Just to really ensure that the enemy team is going slower than me and let say, hey, I go first, not you. I make uh, Reginald's turn a little better. And yeah. 
And even if I'm wasting traces and um, trackers or whatever, it's still better to have the option and not the and not use it, right? I'd rather check and make sure. Not check at all. <laughs> And remember, the goal is I want Andrew to be going faster than things like squirrels and rabbits because those are notoriously fast and can really end a run if you are not careful. I don't know why I'm playing these in the wrong order because it doesn't really matter. Oh no, I hurt myself. I'll get over it. I. I think that concludes the Andrew's thing. And this healing serenade, sure, it'd be nice, but I don't want to clog up my deck with too many that I don't need. Depending on your deck is how much healing or how much evasion or, you know, I'm going to pick my role, but I'm only going to pick one or two cards to fill that role because everything else is set in stone of what I want to do. All right, so that was combat unlock. Andrin is a starting character. You do not need to unlock him. He is baseline unlocked. To get his skin, you do have to have the DLC, um, the Wolf Wars. You have to go to the Act 1, go to the Augur Node, and go complete that once. I don't remember if you had to go north or south or middle to get it, but eventually you'll get his skin. And it's a very fun, cool Western one. And then for team comps for him, anyone that is... Henry goes really well with a DPS that's already fast, because some DPS, it's hard to slow them down. So to get the rest of the team faster than them, Andrew comes in and says, hey, by the way, Nesglick, I'll speed you up. Hey, Cornelius, you're kind of slow. I'll speed you up. And suddenly, Andrin can speed up the two slow pokes and not have to slow down your fast character. Uh, Andrin really does prefer to have someone else do some vulnerable. He can do a little bit of a vulnerable. Uh, Nesglick can do some late game vulnerable. So this team right here could get it done by the end of the game. But for the most part, They'll struggle with early game, so someone like a Magnus or a Bree or a Heiner. Like, you're not necessarily going to need a like these these people, they might you might as well just throw them as a tank because Andrew will just go faster than them, but mix and match to your heart's content. Um, you want someone else doing vulnerable on the team. Uh mages, nope, mages can't do it. It's really only Nesglect and Warriors that are good at vulnerable. So I highly just recommend if you're playing a Yager team, Andrin is a great fit because Yager will do all the vulnerable. Andrin speeds everyone up. Yager's already super slow to begin with. So just a great duo. And then DPS. Andrin does benefit slashing DPS the most because he does have the, he applies the most mark in the game. And there is the talent that says, or the perk that says mark reduces slashing resistances. So that's a Grookly or a Thules or even a Magnus uh, as DPS. And then, of course, Scouts just naturally pair well with anyone that does sharp damage as well, because Andrin does have the options for sharp, especially in that Ballad of Conquest that is both sharp and bless. So any of your DPS that rely on piercing damage or slashing damage will really benefit from Andrin. Slashing will just, of course, double dip in Andrin's benefits. And um, yeah, and if you're not running him as a tank, just run him as a, uh, a support that speeds up any team and you will have great success. Uh, Andrin is a shoe-in for... I, I I will gladly take Andrin on any team. There's very few teams that I'm like, oh, I don't have space to bring Andrin. And, uh, yeah. that's uh, That covers it for Team Cops. This one was a little rough. Thank you for your patience. Uh, times I feel like a babble. Times I struggle to breathe. It is just a... It is a process. Several attempts and several tries. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your help and concern. And if you do want to support these videos, I mean, hey, feedback is the thing I like the most. Criticism is great. It helps me improve the videos. Uh, saying you liked it, that goes a long way to make me feel good because, hey, I'm a normal human being. What can I say? And then, of course, um, money does make the world smoother. So if you want to support me, that is an option as well. Uh, either direct donations or they have uh, channel memberships through YouTube. Uh, I have that set up. I have them set to very small amounts because I feel very guilty accepting money from people. So I will only take those in the small quantities that I have posted there. And uh, yeah, let me know what you want to see. And like I said, criticism and feedback are great. I accept both of them to my fullest extent. I 
I just feed off those because I like to make these videos. These these videos are for you. They're not for me. Like I enjoy making them, but I don't benefit from them. like other than practice and on, on speaking and teaching. Uh, I'm just speaking stuff I already know. Right. So let me know what you want to hear from me and I will catch you later. Peace.